everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up a simple front end workflow using my favorite code editor, VS Code. I'll walk you through setting up a file structure for HTML, SCSS, and JavaScript files. And I'll also show you how you can install extensions and, of course, themes. Sound good? Let's get into it. All right, so if you don't have VS Code installed yet, you can install it by first running a search. I'm using DuckDuckGo for my search. Type in VS Code, and it should be the first result. Code.visualstudio.com is the URL. And then on their homepage, they will prompt you to download whatever version you have, depending on your OS. Once you have VS Code downloaded and installed, the next thing to do is to create a project folder. What I usually do is I'll go to my desktop and I'll create an empty folder on the desktop. Then you can open it in VS Code by going to File, Open Folder, and then selecting the folder that you just created. Now we have our folder open and we can start creating our files. Okay, so we're going to be adding some HTML, SCSS, and JavaScript files. First up is index.html. So in our explorer on the left, we are going to create a new file, call it index.html, then it'll automatically open. And I'm going to use an Emmet shortcut, exclamation point, to add boilerplate HTML into our file. So we'll update the title, we'll just say VS Code Workflow. And then we'll add some text to the page as well, so we can use that to test later. So I'll add an h1 tag, same thing, VS Code Workflow. Then we'll use some uh, Emmet shortcuts, so I'm going to create a paragraph tag. In that paragraph tag, I want to add some lorem ipsum, maybe 30 words. And then I actually want to multiply that. Let's do maybe three, three paragraphs of lorem ipsum placeholder text. There we go. And then we can use the Alt Z shortcut to wrap the lines. Now for our SAS and our JavaScript files, I usually put them both in a folder called app. So let's create a folder, app. And then in the folder, we'll add two subfolders, one for SCSS files, and then another one for JavaScript files. So let's create our SAS files first. And just so you know, I'm using the term SAS and SCSS interchangeably because when SAS first came out, it had its own syntax and then SCSS syntax was added on later. And that's the one that most people use nowadays. So when you say SAS these days, it usually means SCSS syntax. So I might say both. So in our SCSS folder, I'm going to create first our main SAS file. So we'll say style.scss. And our main SAS file is really only to import um, these styles from our other SAS files. So we'll leave that blank for now and we'll create maybe another file. And I'm going to call this underscore globals.scss. Now the underscore just kind of signifies that it's a partial SAS file, which means that is just one part of all the complete styles that we're going to have. So what we want to do is we want to import what styles we have in the globals SAS file into our style.scss file. So to do that, we will type in at import, and then we will in quotes type the name of our partial without the underscore at the beginning or the SCSS file extension at the end. So this is all that we have to type because we you know, formatted the underscore globals in that way. Now in our global SAS file, let's add some global styles. The first one is the HTML selector, and I usually do font size 100%. This lets the user have control over the size of the text on their screen um, by either zooming in and out or adjusting the browser size, um, the default font size in their browser. So we got that. And then we're going to say box sizing border box. And this setting is pretty important to have because border box means that an element can have padding and it won't add on to the width. So let's say you have an element that you set to 400 pixels. If you also add padding of 20 pixels, you still want the final width to be 400 pixels. Otherwise things get kind of weird. So that's what box sizing border box does. Then we're going to inherit that box sizing border box in all the other elements. So we're going to say wildcard as well as wildcard before and wildcard after for these pseudo elements. And they will inherit the box sizing from the HTML element. Then I'm going to add a body selector 
and I will first set font family to let's see we got some choices here from VS code but I usually just do Arial just because I like the sans serif fonts better I also usually set a global line height of 1.1.3 just to add a little spacing to your text um, in addition you can also do something like set all margins and padding to zero and that should be good for now um, let's also add a background color background color and we will do maybe dark gray 202020 and then we'll set a text color of white fff fff okay let's work on our javascript now so in the app.js folder let's create a file called script.js this is just for vanilla javascript and I'm just going to add some code so that we can test and make sure it's working when we load our website. So I'll say console log. Hello, everybody. Save that. And that's really all that we need for our JavaScript file right now. All right. So now that we have our files all set up, the next thing we want to do is we want to compile our SAS files into a final CSS file. And we also want to be able to run a local server so we can load our website in the browser. Now to do that, I'm actually going to kill two birds with one stone with this really cool extension called Live SAS Compiler. Now, if you don't have it installed yet, you can go to the extensions marketplace by clicking this logo on the left side. And then in the text box, type in Live SAS Compiler. And here it is, Live SAS Compiler. Now I already have this installed. That's why I have the button that says uninstall, but if you don't have it yet, you can just click this button here to, that says install, and then you will install not just the live SAS compiler, but it also installs live server, which is another extension by the same person. And this loads a local server so you can load your website in the browser. Now, once you've installed the live SAS extension, you might need to close the folder and then reopen it. And this is so VS Code can detect that you have um, the right files to run the live SAS as well as the live server extension. So once we reopen the folder, if we look down at the bottom bar, we have the watch SAS button as well as a go live button. So let's try it out. If we click the watch SAS button, it starts compiling things to CSS. And then when we click the go live button, it should, there we go, it should load our website. Now, let's zoom in a little bit. And it's also not taking our styles, so we need to add that in our index.html file. So we add link tag, it's gonna be a CSS. And the CSS file is in the dist folder, dist.style.css. So now it is watching our SAS files for any changes. And if we go back to our browser, um, it's also watching the index.html file for any change. So it'll reload anytime you make changes to your files, which is really nice because then you don't have to, you know, reload your browser every single time yourself. So this is good. So we can see that our styles seem to be working. Um, I think we also need to add our JavaScript file. So let's do that at the bottom. Script source. And that's also going to be um, app js script.js okay so let's save that go back into our browser and if we can see this might be a little hard for you to see there we go so you can see the hello everybody message way down there in our console so that means that our css files are loading correctly and it is running javascript as well now i did want to point out one more thing about the live sas extension and that is that by default it's going to create the final css file in the same location as your main sas file which is here however i've actually added a little bit of customization so that it puts the final css and the map file in a folder called dist and that's just because that's just how i like to set up my files i like to have all my final files in a dist folder as opposed to the files in an app folder um, you don't have to do this, but I'm just going to quickly show you how I did add this customization. So if you go into the command palette, which you can access by view command palette, or you can do the control shift P hotkey. And we're going to go to open settings. This is going to open the settings.json file. And in this file, you can add lots of different options for your workflow. So we're just going to do a quick search for live SAS. So down here in this section, these are the different settings and options you can set for your live SAS compiler extension. 
Um, and here I have format expanded, which means it's not going to minify the CSS. Um, then the extension name is going to be .css because that's the type of file that we're creating. And then the last option, the save path, this is where you can tell VS Code to put the final CSS file if you want it to be in a different location than your main SAS file. And so this is where I have the slash dist to put the final files in this dist folder here. So that's it for how I set up my simple front end workflow. Now let's get to the fun part, themes. This is a really cool part of VS Code that I love because it comes with a bunch of themes. You can also download themes that other people have made from the uh, marketplace, and you can also create your own theme if you really want to. So how we adjust the themes are going to File, Preferences, Color Theme. And you can also use a hotkey, Control K, Control T. And this will show you all the themes that you have currently. Now I have installed quite a few themes, but you can see if I scroll through these, you know, it'll change the color based on whatever theme that I've chosen. So you have a lot of different selections. Now, if the default themes that VS Code comes with are not what you're looking for, you can look for more. And you can do that by a couple different ways. If you go back to your color theme, there is an option at the bottom, install additional color themes. Now it's opened up the extensions marketplace um, again. Let's kind of make this a little bit bigger. And it's searching for category themes. So you can go through they have icon themes, and that's to control, you know, the little icons for the files that you can see in your um, file explorer. But it also has the themes, which is, you know, different ones that you can install to affect how your VS Code looks and feels. Um, this material theme is pretty popular, and I haven't installed it yet, so let's click on this button and install it. All right, material theme, it has a bunch of different styles, it looks like. So this is just really fun because you can make your VS Code coding experience look exactly the way you want it to. So that's it for setting up a simple front end workflow using VS Code. I hope this video has helped you. And if you have any questions, you can always leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching and keep on coding.